All right, guys, welcome back to another video. So in this one, we're gonna be building a small dovetail blanket chest. Now, if you've been following me for a while, you may have seen about a year ago, I built another blanket chest that was much larger and followed a frame and panel design. On this one, I wanted to do something that was just a lot simpler visually and physically to make. So all we're doing right now is starting by making five large panels. So two for the fronts and the back, uh, one for the sides, and then another one for the lid. With all the panels out of the clamps, we're going to set the lid panel aside till much later in the project and we're going to start by getting our main body panels all cleaned up. So I'm just going to use this plane to knock out most of the glue, then I'm going to finish it off by putting all these pieces through the drum sander to give us a nice flat surface to reference all of our joinery against. Then to break down our panels, I decided to use the track saw because it's definitely a lot safer than trying to use my table saw. I don't have a good crosscut sled or anything like that to deal with panels this wide for my table saw, so the track saw made quick and accurate work of it. So I'm starting by just splitting the side panel panels into two pieces, and then we can go and clean them up nicely on the table saw. Then for the long front and back panels, I just buddied them up, cut them with the track saw, and this made sure that both came out to the exact same length. For a joinery, we're going to be using through dovetails, because mostly because they're just a nice decorative touch, uh, and they're also quite easy to do. So if you have a dovetail jig like I've got here, this is by far the easiest way to do it, and with the size of the piece, I don't really have an issue with the whole machine cut look, but you could definitely do this all by hand, and I think it would look just as good, if not maybe a little bit better. So it all comes down to you know what you can do and what you want to do. With the main body of the case all glued up, we now have to clean up all the little bit of protruding dovetails that we have left over. So anytime you do dovetails, you always want to leave a little bit of material protruding and then clean it up afterwards. This just saves you having them run too short and having to remove a whole bunch of material from your panel. So the easiest way to do this is with a hand plane. I've tried every other method that there is, you know, sanding is probably the most popular ones that I've seen, and the hand plane is faster and more accurate. And later on in this project, we're going to be adding a base frame to the bottom of the case here. So we need to make sure that these sides stay perfectly flat all the way through. Otherwise, the joinery on our bottom frame is not going to line up nicely. 
The hand plane also comes in great for flattening off the top edge. So all I'm doing here is just truing up this edge to be perfectly flat. So I'm constantly going back and forth, checking the base of this case with my winding sticks, checking it against my table saw and all that, because I want this to be as flat as absolutely possible. This also gave me a good opportunity to play with my new number seven uh, jointer plane, which was an absolute treat. This thing is so long and did such a good job at just making sure that this top edge was perfectly flat. Then of course, because no one's dovetails are ever perfect, we're doing a little bit of crack filler and then you can just again, clean that up with the low angle jack. Then I can finish it all off with some 220 grit sanding just to clean up any of those scratch marks I left with the hand plane. With the case all together, we can now move on to our base frame. So this is gonna be a pretty simple structure. It's gonna be just four pieces that are mitered together at the corners. And we're gonna add a little bit of a lift detail in the middle section, just so this whole chest seems a little bit lighter and a little bit higher off the ground. Now you could very easily leave your bottom frame here and you would end up with a little bit more of a traditional look. A lot of the blanket chests I've seen in the past have this solid base to them and all it's meant to do is just give a little bit of extra detail or, or uh, space to the bottom of the chest. But like I said before, I want to add a little lift detail just to open it up and give it a little bit more breathing room. The other benefit of this is if the blanket chest ends up getting placed over a heat vent, which you should never do with your furniture by the way, but if it does, it allows that the heat coming from that vent to get out and away from the piece of furniture and doesn't build up underneath. So it does give a little bit more option of placement in the room. And so I'm just using my bandsaw here with a quarter inch blade to just remove the material in there and then we'll go back in with the oscillating sander to just clean up to my line and get an absolutely perfect shape in there. Now at this stage, I didn't want to glue the base frame to the case just yet because there was still some fine tuning stuff I wanted to do. So we're just going to put some masking tape over these corners to make sure that the glue squeeze out from gluing up the miters is not actually going to stick to the case. Now as we go through the next few steps here, you might be wondering why I didn't just glue the base to the case in this first step here, and in hindsight, I should have done it that way. The reason I didn't is because originally I had planned to add in some uh, keys to the miters, just to add for a little bit of extra strength. The problem that I ran into is I couldn't find a good way to hold this frame to go pass it over my table saw to cut those slots for the keys. So I eventually just decided that I was just gonna glue the whole frame to the base of the case, and so that's what you see me do here. Now this is plenty strong. I don't, I don't have any worries about those miters breaking over time. Because all of our pieces are glued directly to that solid structure of the case, they're gonna be just fine. The next part that we need to build is the base panel. Obviously, if you're putting stuff in this blanket chest, and uh, you don't want it just falling off onto the floor. So I decided for the base panel that we were just going to do something floating. Now this is the easiest option by far because all you're doing is making a couple of support bars and screwing them to the main body of the case. 
Now, you could also build something internal, you know, cut a groove or a dado into the bottom of your case pieces and actually make a fixed panel. That might be a little bit stronger, but the benefit of this is that it's replaceable. So if in the future I want to change it up, do something different for the base panel of this blanket chest, then I have that option there. At the same time, we're also gonna add in our tracks that our floating tray is gonna ride on. Now these are thin quarter inch strips of cherry. You don't need these to be very thick because that tray is not going, doesn't need a whole lot of strength behind it. Uh, you just need something for it to run on. Onto our base structure now, I decided to go with tongue and groove slats made from white ash. Now you're going to see exactly why I chose white ash in just a little bit here. Uh, it, it was a pretty cool design choice in my own opinion. But I'm making this all from 8 quarter stock because that's just what I had around. I'm basically taking this 8 quarter stock, turning it into a bunch of whole, uh, 4 quarter stock, and then turning that into our tongue and groove slats. Now obviously if you are buying wood for this project, you're much better off to just buy some four quarter stock, that'll save you a lot of time and effort. But again, this is just what I had. And so the only trick by using tongue and groove slats for the bottom panel is you have to make sure that you account for the expansion and contraction room here. So when all of these pieces are completely compressed together, you can see I can just slip in that last piece. Then on to the floating tray, we're going to be building this out of ash as well for the same reason that we're building the base panel out of ash. So again, this is just going to be made from some 8 quarter stock, re down to some 4 quarter stock. Then for the joiner in the tray, I decided to do some hand cut dovetails. Just after doing the whole case of this trunk uh, with the machine cut dovetails, I figured it'd be fun to just, uh, you know, stretch my hands, get, you know, get some practice in doing some hand cut dovetails. Now, again, you could do this with machinery, you could do it by hand, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, it's, you know, it's all about what you enjoy doing. Personally for me, on the case of the blanket chest here, I really enjoyed using the, the machine cut dovetails because they're super accurate, fast, precise, all that good stuff. And because just the sheer number of them on the case, that would have been a lot of work. Whereas on the small tray, doing them by hand is fun, enjoyable, you know, it's a nice afternoon project. Uh, whereas the blanket chest probably would have been a few days of cutting those dovetails. So it's all, again, it all just comes down to what you want to do.
Now, like I said before, there's a very specific reason why I chose Ash for our base slats and our tray, and that is because I'm going to be using milk paint on them. Now, this is my own home blend color of milk paint. I was going for this nice dark forest green because I thought that it complemented the natural, you know, reddish orange tones of the cherry really nicely. And so milk paint is something that I've wanted to start adding into my projects more and more often because it's really nice to be able to take a wood like ash that has a very open and porous grain structure and apply to some paint to it that not only gives it a nice flat color but gives it some color in general. By using milk paint it also soaks into the wood and shows off the pores of the ash uh, and just gives you this really cool woody texture that's a nice flat matte color. And continue on with our experimentation, bringing in some leather to this project. So if you followed along with my channel, I quite like adding leather little bits and pieces to certain pieces of furniture that I've done. I think that the natural textures and tones of leather are very, very interesting to work with. So here we're going to be making some just simple handles to attach to the tray so that way it's easier to lift in and out and pull from side to side. For the base of the tray, we're going to be using some slightly thinner leather that's already pre-stained. Now, I like using this stuff because it's a lot easier than trying to dye it yourself. Uh, anytime you try to dye a large piece of leather at home, it usually comes out fairly splotchy and not as nice. So this simple piece of pre-dyed leather that is also, like I said, thinner, uh, just forms and fits in this drawer bottom a little bit easier. So I'm just using some Type On 3 spread around in the area to glue that piece of leather to the base of the tray. Now when it comes to finishing the milk painted parts, it's really important that you separate your finish from the main can. I don't typically do this on most of my wood projects, but in this case, as you're rubbing in that milk paint, you are going to get some of that pigment on your pad. And so if you're constantly dipping that back into your main can of finish, you're going to end up coloring it. And in this case, I would dye my entire can of tried and true original oil, uh, this nice dark green, and I'd end up getting that on all my other pieces of furniture and that that I finished with this oil. And for our lid, we're just going to be using some simple extruded brass hinges. Now, there's a whole bunch of different options that you have when it comes to what kind of hinges to use for a blanket chest. You could use piano hinges, brass hinges like I'm doing here, or you can even find some really nice specialty hinges like the ones I used on my first blanket chest, which were hand-forged uh, iron. And those looked pretty good. But in this case, I wanted a little bit of a cleaner, simpler aesthetic, so the brass hinges just made sense.
For the finish of the main body of this trunk, we're gonna be using tried and true original oil. Now I went for the original oil on this one because I wanted a nice soft matte finish to this case. Because this is something that you're gonna be touching and handling, you know, when you use it, I wanted the nice feel of the original oil. Uh, that beeswax in it gives it a very nice texture and overall, it just, it gives it an amazing look. Coming back to the lid now, we already have our panel glued up that we did at right at the beginning of this project that's been sitting for a while, and we're going to be turning this into a breadboard end lid. Now you could very easily do C channel or something on the bottom of your panel, but if you guys have been following me for any amount of time, you know that I love a good breadboard end anything. So if I have the excuse to do it, I'm going to do it. And so that's exactly what we're going to be doing here is just adding in those ends to keep this panel perfectly flat for the rest of its life. With the lid mostly finished up, we can now mount on our hinges. Now, the easiest way to locate your hinges is to not do any measuring, just to just pass your marks from the case up to the lid. This is going to give you 100% accuracy every single time and really limit the amount of chance you have of screwing this up.
To make sure the lid can't flop open and crush a small child or break itself mostly, we're going to be adding in this little chain catch. Now these things are really nice looking. I much prefer this way to, you know, the more modern style of using either a torsion hinge or a gas hinge in, of some kind to keep that lid open. Uh, the chain is just simple and elegant. We're also gonna be adding in some stops to make sure that you can always get your hands into the handles of the tray. So it's a little one inch stop to just keep the tray that little ways away from the edge of the case. On to final assembly now, we're going to be screwing each of these bottom slats into that bottom bar. Now you might think that this sounds like a lot of screws, but it really was not that bad. Uh, and it makes sure that none of these slats are going to move around, they're going to stay solidly fixed in place. And so as we do the final assembly of the blanket chest, I would love to hear what you guys think of it. So feel free to leave a comment down below as I always appreciate hearing you guys' thoughts. But this was a super fun project and I hope you guys enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one.